in this new episode of What's Left. We are suffering right now. Just the last weekend, we had six femicides. That means there is a patriarchal way of thinking. Women belong to their brothers, husbands, whatever. And this has to stop it. Seguro que todos hemos escuchado muchas veces eso de que detrás de un hombre siempre hay una gran mujer. Pues nos hemos cansado de estar detrás. Women are unstoppable. They will never ever stop on their fight for equality because they know they deserve to be equal. Europa será feminista o no será. Allas rätt till ett eget arbete, bort med våld och sexuella övergrepp och lika lön för alla. How many more of us women must be killed before you stand on the right side of history? Werden Sie Feminist? Sie glauben gar nicht, wie wunderbar es ist, Feminist zu sein. This just in, women now have complete equality. Women's rights groups are disbanding around the world and there's no more need for feminism. Actually, we still have quite a bit left to do. Let's take it from the top, shall we? We know now that gender equal societies are happier, healthier, more prosperous for everyone. But still, we're miles from equality. Believe it or not, not everyone agrees with our march towards gender parity. The revolutionary force of feminism has generated backlash amongst far-right movements which are increasingly taking power. But why? Who objects to women? Why does the far-right not want women in positions of power and deny their right to decide over their own bodies? Why do they refuse to acknowledge gender-based violence or advocate for equal pay? In this new episode of What's Left, we're diving into why feminism makes us all more free, what we can do to protect the rights that we've won, and what we can say to those who oppose half the world being equal. And of course, women must earn less than men because they are weaker, they are smaller, they are less intelligent, and they must earn less. That's all. Mire, señor diputado, según usted, según sus teorías, yo no tendría derecho de estar aquí como diputada. Y sé que le duele, sé que le duele y le preocupa que hoy las mujeres podamos estar representando a los ciudadanos en igualdad de condiciones con usted. Yo aquí vengo a defender a las mujeres europeas de hombres como usted. Crazy, right? That was as recent as 2017 here in the European Parliament. Since then, we've had two pieces of good news. Firstly, last year, against the will of the far right, we managed to adopt a law to fight the gender pay gap. Secondly, the lovely guy we just heard from was voted out during last October's elections in Poland. But while he's history, the far right is unfortunately growing everywhere in Europe. We spoke to some of the members of the European Parliament leading the fight for equality. Sie stehen für eine Welt, die deutlich macht, Männer sind der Kopf einer Familie. Für eine Welt, die deutlich macht, Männer sind der Kopf in der Politik und Frauen sollen immer nur die Handlangerinnen sein. Genau für solche Politik steht die AfD. Und das macht sie für Männer, gerade für junge Männer, oft so attraktiv. Es wird doch immer wieder von der AfD die neue Männlichkeit beschrieben. Wann müsste zur neuen Männlichkeit zurückfinden? Bedeutet es für uns Frauen, dass wir aber zur alten Weiblichkeit wiederkehren sollen? Wieder zurück an den Herd, wieder zurück nur für die Kinder. Allein die Aussage der AfD, dass jede deutsche Frau drei Kinder bekommen soll, ist grenzüberschreitend. Und ich glaube, genau das zieht manche Männer an. Es zieht manche Männer an, wenn sie sehen, wie unflätig mit Frauen umgegangen wird, weil sie glauben, sie sind mehr wert. Denn die AfD steht für ein ganz klar hierarchisches System. Erst die Männer, dann die Frauen. The right wing parties, they usually use our prejudices, our fears, our gaps also in legislation to sneak in our minds and to hijack us politically and mentally. 
And this is the biggest danger. That's why we as progressive forces, we have obligation not only to deliver equality in legislation, but also remember that human rights, democracy, rule of law are not given for granted. There will be always some populists uh, who will try to hijack all, uh, these values. Jag kommer ju från Sverige, ett land där vi eh, har kämpat hårt för jämställdhet och jämlikhet med att bygga reformer. Och vi mäter ju också väldigt högt i ett internationellt sammanhang. Men jag ser samtidigt hur snabbt det går att rasera. Vi fick för ett och ett halvt år sedan en högerkonservativ regering som styrs av ett extremparti. Och jag ser hur snabbt man kan rasera. Det första den regeringen gjorde var att man tog bort den välkända eh, politiken från vår socialdemokratiska regering som handlade om att vi hade en feministisk utrikespolitik. Den var känd över hela världen. Den tog man bort. So why is it so hard to accept equality between men and women? So I checked the Treaty of Rome from uh, 1957. Article 8 of the Treaty of the Functioning of the European Union. In all its activities, this union shall aim to eliminate inequalities and to promote equality between men and women. Seems pretty clear, right? But even if the EU is a world leader in gender equality, still none of our member states have achieved full parity. And if we continue at our current pace, we'll have equality in 60 years. Progress is slow. It's kind of three steps forward and two steps back, or sometimes four steps back. Seguro que todos hemos escuchado muchas veces eso de que detrás de un hombre siempre hay una gran mujer. Pues nos hemos cansado de estar detrás. Queremos estar tomando decisiones. Queremos estar en los espacios donde se decide sobre nuestras vidas. En el ámbito de lo económico, en el ámbito de lo social y laboral, en el ámbito de lo político. No es una opción. Es una obligación, porque tengamos clara una cuestión. Si queremos avanzar de forma justa en el proyecto europeo, tenemos que tener en cuenta que Europa será feminista o no será. In Austria, we had a nice campaign in the public transport. It caused a lot of debate. It was a man spreading. Men sitting like this when they're in the underground, taking all the seats from the others. It was about the cliches and uh, how women are made invisible because then they don't have enough space. Is there a right of men always taking all the room or all the time when there are uh, negotiations? From my point of view, we should do far more at the European level as much to face the issue. What's the right of men? Do they have the right to take all the space, all the time, the attitude to say, I'm the leader and you're a part of my team? Wir haben zwar sehr viele Rechte, die bereits angeglichen sind, aber die Möglichkeiten, die Möglichkeiten für Frauen sind immer noch ganz, ganz anders als die Möglichkeiten für Männer. Und vor allen Dingen das Thema Gewalt. Das Thema Gewalt quält uns doch jeden Tag. Wenn ich mir vorstelle, dass in Deutschland jeden zweiten Tag, jeden dritten Tag eine Frau durch die Hand ihres Partners oder Ex-Partners stirbt, das ist ein Femizid. Das ist nicht ein, sie ist zufällig gestorben, sondern es ist ein bewusster Angriff gegen Frauen. Frauen werden ermordet weil sie nicht den Weg gehen wollen, den die Männer gehen wollen. Das ist etwas, das ist gleich. In den 60er und 70er Jahren genauso wie heute. Ich denke, que être féministe, c'est vraiment mettre la femme dans un podium et et alors à ce moment-là, ben on serait dans l'inégalité, mais ce n'est pas le cas en fait, c'est tout simplement donner à la femme ses droits. Les mêmes qu'on donne aux hommes, mais c'est tout simplement être dans l'égalité des droits et pas dans l'inégalité. Les gens pensent souvent que le féminisme c'est de dire ouais les femmes plus haut que les hommes que les femmes que les femmes alors que pas du tout c'est une question d'égalité c'est une question d'avoir les mêmes droits c'est c'est tout ça voilà c'est très simple en vrai les gens pensent que c'est compliqué mais c'est très simple The socialists and democrats will always fight for feminism and right now that means stopping the pandemic of violence against women gender based violence has to be recognized as an EU crime La violencia contra las mujeres no distingue de clases sociales, ni niveles culturales, ni origen geográfico, ni credo religioso. Ocurre en todos los segmentos de la sociedad y en todos los lugares del mundo. También en nuestra civilizada Europa, aunque algunos pretendan negarlo, donde una de cada tres mujeres sufrirá en algún momento de su vida algún tipo de violencia. A recordarse ancora una volta que las mujeres 
non muoiono a causa di una tragedia naturale, non muoiono perché ammazzate da un terremoto o da un'alluvione, muoiono perché ammazzate tutte per mano di uomini. Non fermati, va fermata la cultura che alimenta la loro violenza, perché ha un nome preciso, si chiama patriarcato. How many more of us women must be killed before you stand on the right side of history and say only yes means yes. Women are suffering under violence because it's a system in our society. It's a structural thing. And the Istanbul Convention says, when you go home and close your door and your husband hits you, if there is online, offline violence whatsoever, it's not something private. This is something that is a task of the society and the, the state, the authorities have to do something to protect women wherever they are, in the streets, in the workplace, when they're at home. It's a task of the state. I come from Austria. Just the last weekend, we had six femicides. And this is really incredible. Vi vet att eh, våld och sexuella övergrepp ökar eh, också på nätet och eh, det är bara några klick bort så finns det fullständigt vidriga filmer där unga flickor utnyttjas för sexuella övergrepp och det måste få ett stopp. Vi hade ju på väg fram en lagstiftning som skulle komma åt sexuella övergrepp mot barn på nätet. Vi nådde inte ända fram. Jag är övertygad om att den frågan kommer tillbaka och att vi behöver en stark lagstiftning som tar i tur med det som är så viktigt, det som är olagligt i verkligheten måste också vara olagligt på nätet. Fighting for feminism right now means ensuring free, safe and legal abortion as a fundamental right across the entire EU. When we had in Poland this terrible government that uh, really diminished women's rights and abolished the right to abortion. It was us from all member countries who were in solidarity with these fantastic uh, strike Kobiet uh, women and men going on the streets. It's a question of European solidarity. You are not alone wherever you are, and that's the same that has to be applied in all other countries. Polish women have less rights than French women. Slovak women have less rights than Dutch women. Is it fair? It's not fair. Why? We as uh, uh, progressive forces, we propose European Union's Women's Rights Charter, the catalog, harmonization of all women's rights in all European Union, that every girl and every woman, wherever she lives, is protected, that never ever again the things which happen in Poland will happen in any other country in this continent. The EU Charter of Women's Rights that we're pushing for would ensure key fundamental rights for women and girls across the entire EU. It will ensure that every woman has the right to decide about their bodies, access to contraception, a life free from violence, and socio-economic rights and economic independence. Fighting for feminism right now also means closing the gender pay gap to achieve equality. From my point of view, one of the biggest achievements that's the pay transparency directive. That means uh, equal pay for equal work and work of equal value for both men and women. And this is really something we're waiting for decades. Pay transparency means as a woman, you can go and compare and ask your employer and the employer has to do that. What is my male colleague earning that, there, that is forbidden to have pay secrecy? It means let's talk about money and it means to get all the instruments that you get all this information and to get your money paid. We always need binding measures. That's what I say is when we're always doing those enterprises should be something on a voluntary basis that's all rubbish. It doesn't work. We have experiences over decades it doesn't work. So we need the quota. We need the pay transparency uh, put into practice and, of course, to ensure that there are more boys, more men that are going into the care jobs. So it's these three measures. The far right court male voters and they're whipping up an old fashioned misogyny. Men should support gender equality, not only for the sake of women, which is a pretty good reason, but also for themselves. Everyone is losing not to be a feminist. 
we are losing all because the world which will be uh, more just, the world which will be more equal is a better world. The world where men are so frustrated that they are losing something is, is the frustrated world. That's why it's very important that we will invest uh, more in educating boys and men of the progress we are making on the fight for women's rights. Also because women are unstoppable. They will never ever stop on their fight for equality because they know they deserve to be equal. Don't get frustrated. Get on the board with us. The most important thing is change minds, to change the culture, to change the way we are treating each other. And this includes, above all, also to inspire boys and men. So for the future, I think it is absolutely of utmost importance to take far more men and boys on board. I think it starts already in education. It's to educate our children so that they have respect. It starts by respect. Donc le respect de la, la femme, euh, euh, éduquer les plus jeunes dans ce respect-là, les garçons, les filles aussi d'ailleurs. We made tremendous steps forward. This is like landing on the moon for women's rights, a, a very important term. We access to Istanbul Convention, dealing with uh, combating violence against women. We have directive devoted to this, including online uh, violence, cyber stalking and so on, deep fake news. We reached the uh, uh, directive on equality bodies, pay transparency, uh, women on boards. Huge progress on women's rights, thanks to progressive forces and the commitment to this case from socialists and democrats. But of course there is still much to do. Om det var vårt krav från socialdemokraterna eh, att vi också har för första gången historiskt i EU en lag mot mäns våld mot kvinnor. Sen är jag inte nöjd med alla delar. Jag skulle vilja gå ännu längre. Jag vill att den lagen ska också inkludera eh, våldtäkt och prostitution. Men det här är ett viktigt första steg. Oh, it's great to be able to say this is the best legislative period ever for gender equality and for women and women's rights. Vi möchte hier eine Einladung aussprechen, eine Einladung an alle Männer, egal aus welcher Parteienfamilie. Werden Sie Feminist? Sie glauben gar nicht, wie wunderbar es ist, Feminist zu sein. Women are unstoppable. The march for freedom continues. Let's get on board.